Not since the crisis in 2015 has Europe seen images quite like this. The Deputy Prime Minister describes it as an invasion. It is obviously organised, financed and prepared. It is an act of war, because if we go on at 6,000 migrants a day, it means collapse for Italian society. I said it at the beginning. What is happening in Lampedusa is the death of Europe. 7,000 migrants crossing the Mediterranean in just three days to an island with space for just 400. The storm at the beginning of the week had created a bottleneck on the North African beaches, but by Wednesday conditions were calmer. Nearly 200 boats crossed in just a few hours. There are, thousand more, there are thousands more who are still waiting to cross. From here, in Lampedusa, most of these migrants will be transferred to the Italian mainland, but the vast majority will disappear before those asylum claims are decided. They are heading north, and that is testing the European Union. Today, one of the leaders of the French far-right, Maria Maréchal, was in Lampedusa to see it for herself. We know that many of the people we are seeing today will probably be in France in a week or a month's time. So I want to be here to call for a change in policy at the European level and also for our member governments to take responsibility and stop sending out signals of openness that are contributing to the humanitarian situation we are seeing today in Lampedusa. Well, in response, the French have this week doubled their police presence on the border with Italy. Rome called on its neighbours to share the burden and in response they are refusing to take back returns while Italy's processing centres remain full. We've heard similar uh, discussions from Germany that they are also patrolling uh, their borders. Uh, joining me from Turin tonight is uh, Luca Barana. He's a research fellow at IAI. It's an Italian relations think tank. Uh, his research focuses on EU and Italian migration policies. Uh, we will get to that very shortly. But what is at the root of this? Uh, 124,000 have landed in Italy this year. That's up from 65,000 during the same period last year. year. Why, why are we seeing so many people crossing all at once? Well, the, there is no single cause for migration, honestly, and the situation that we are witnessing over the last 12 months has been an intensification of an, an already existing trend that started in 2020. Numbers in spontaneous arrivals in Italy and irregular crossings of the central Mediterranean Sea uh, 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 have, been become, have been increasing since 2020. Uh, but it's true that over the last 12 months, uh, the situation has worsened in, in this, from this perspective. And also it has changed in terms of the composition of the flow. Now we have more people from sub-Saharan African countries trying to reach, in, to reach Italy, and they are departing from Tunisia. Paradoxically, Tunisian citizens are not uh, the first group represented in the flow towards Italy anymore, as it has been between 2018 and 20 and last year, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and probably one of the main causes is the internal situation in Tunisia, where policies uh, introduced by the government discriminating uh, sub-Saharan migrants presence or transiting through, through the country have been pushing many, many, many people out of the country and towards the Italian shores. Europe has tried and, and failed for many years, <clears throat> excuse me, to, to find a collective response to this. I've sat in on so many summits in Brussels when uh, these things have been discussed. But right now, it seems to me there is no appetite in Europe to help Italy. Politically, what are the risks of that if Italy is left to deal with this alone? Um, actually, it's kind of paradoxical that we are having this kind of discussion but because just two months ago or three months ago, the European Union was uh, witnessing what was defined as a uh, historic agreement in the Council to, to review and to reform the internal uh, asylum system. But we know that the kind of ag agreement is still on paper. Uh, so, yeah, politically, I think there will be consequences. But at the same time, I don't see we are going towards a, um, a rupture in relations between Italy and, and the European Union because Prime Minister Meloni has portrayed herself over the last year since she took, she took office as a cooperative and a reliable partner for the European Union. The Commission is actually aligned with her. Uh, Ursula von der Leyen was in Tunis uh, in order to sign the memorandum with the Tunisian government spearheaded by Italy. Now there are news circulating of the possibility of von der Leyen being in Lampedusa with, with Meloni in a highly sin significant political signal. 
So uh, let's see. I, I don't think we we are going to, to a, towards a clash, uh, but of course in Italy the tones and the rhetoric are are are, uh, are harshening, and we saw and you uh, shared with your audience the, the words from from Matteo Salvini, mm. who's actually has been quite silent over the last year on migration grounds, and now he is toning up again. So mm. I think the tones will go up, but I don't see will be major changes coming coming in our way. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, there, there is a, an appetite within the Commission to do something, but the French are uh, increasing policing o- along their border. The Germans doing the same. Uh, they've got drones in the air. Uh, they've said that uh, they're not going to take migrants from Italy because Italy is not taking migrants back the other way under the Dublin scheme. In fact, there is no Dublin scheme at the moment. So, uh, I mean, what you can see a scenario where, in, in actual fact, the Italian authorities, overwhelmed by this, surely just let these migrants head off through northern Europe. Yes, but this has been a consolidated issue uh, over the last 10 years, I would say. France has always complained about the leniency of the Italian authorities in dealing with so-called secondary movements, so the movement of those people entering Europe through Italy and then moving to other European countries like France, while under the Dublin regulation, their asylum requests should be processed in Italy first. Um, So it it is not a a development and it is not an outcome of current uh, of current news. This is something that has been going on for years. And in fact, no agreement has been possible in Europe on a major agreement really reforming the, the common European asylum system since the migration crisis in 2015. So while what is happening today is a severe issue that will, again, probably have some political consequences, uh, but it's nothing new in terms of relations between European Union member states. France and Germany have their own consolidated position and Italy has its own. Uh, and it has been like this for, I don't know, 10, ten years, maybe. Can we just talk about the, the, where this is coming from? I mean, you've talked specifically about Tunisia and the deal that um, Prime Minister Maloney's tried to uh, put together with the Tunis government. I mean, in years gone by, they used to pay Colonel Gaddafi to patrol the beaches and break up the gangs. Do they have a willing partner in Tunis? Because according to the, Prime, the Deputy Prime Minister, Mr Salvini, he, he thinks it's coordinated and he goes further than that. He calls it a war. Uh, well, uh, f- of course, President Said is a tricky partner. Uh, he has been very skillful in playing European anxieties on migration in order to extract some concessions in the memorandum that was signed in July. Uh, of course, in terms of money that, by the way, has not been disbursed yet. Um, but also, if you read the so memorandum... Do you think he's leveraged? Was... Do you think he's letting them go through because the money's not arrived? We don't. We don't have evidence of this kind of this kind of organized uh, attempt by by Tunisia. Uh, but for sure, uh, a country of a, a government like the one in Tunisia is well aware of uh, the kind of leverage that he has due to the fears of migration in Europe. But I don't think, or I don't have the elements right now to to say that there is an organized uh, attempt to uh, to force Europe uh, hands. Uh, for sure, since the agreement has been, the memorandum, sorry, has been signed, there has been actually an increase in the number of arrivals in Italy from Tunisia. But I don't think, and again, I don't have the elements and the evidence to say that this is an, an organized uh, attempt. Okay. Luca Brana, really good to talk to you. Thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for having me.